Hello and welcome to Cartoonplex, where we use cartoons to help explain complex ideas. Today, we will be talking about computer networking fundamentals. We will follow this guy, which we named PDU, or Protocol Data Unit, through our computer and into a web server. He will be created in our PC, or what we call an end device, a device that is an end destination. Once created, PDU will travel out to our switch, head to our router, get sent out through our internet service provider using our modem, hop on along other routers, and then enter the router, switch, and eventually the web server of the company hosting the website we're trying to visit. Routers, switches, and modems are all known as in-between devices, as they are used to help the data travel to end devices such as the web server and our PC. Once at the web server, he's going to have them send a new PDU back to us with the website data so we can load the web page. To help explain this, we're going to use the OSI or Open Systems Interconnection model. So let's start from the top floor, the application layer. This is where you use an application like a web browser to surf the web. The web browser we are on right now is using the application layer protocol known as the HTTPS or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, with the S standing for secure. This protocol allows us to see the web page. A protocol is simply a set of rules on how data is formatted. Once we click a link to a new web page or website, we create PDU. PDU is HTTP get protocol data. His mission is to get the data of the website from the web server and send the data back to us so we can load it. Because PDU is formatted as the application protocol HTTPS, your computer knows that the data you want to get back from the web server should also be formatted as HTTPS. The format lets your computer know to represent the data it receives as a web page. Let's follow PDU to the presentation layer. I need to find this place. Hmm. We had someone go to the DNS right before you. Let me translate that URL for you. DNS? Yeah, the domain name server. It's a server that holds all of the URL or uniform resource locators and its IP or internet protocol equivalents. You are not going to be able to get to the web server with just the URL. You needed the numbers associated with it. This destination IP is where you want to go. Think of this IP as coordinates like on a map. Hmm. We have to make you a bit smaller compress you so you'll be a lighter load to travel. Sometimes data has to be compressed before it can be sent out. Perfect. Now hold that compression in until you get to the web server. The presentation clerk on that side will decompress you so that you can be read perfectly. One more thing. You need the symmetric key. This will allow the presentation clerk over at the web server to understand you, since this is the hidden language we both agreed upon. Using a symmetric key is a way to encrypt data using one secret key to both encrypt and then decrypt the data. Since we're using a secure version of HTTPS, PDU needs to bring that key with him. Now head towards the next floor to receive your next item. The next layer is the session layer. Here, PDU is given a session ID. This session ID was given to us when we first logged into the website. This lets our PC and the web server know that we are the same logged in person. That's why PDU needs to bring the session ID with him on his mission to the web server. This session ID is important. It'll let the web server know it's us asking for the data. Your mission is to tell the web server to send back a new web page. We'll manage the connection so the user can download the text and image files that make up the web page. Okay. 
Make sure you head down to the transport layer to get the right TCP port numbers. TCP? Transmission Control Protocol. Don't waste time, get moving! PDU then enters the transport layer. Here, PDU is given two TCP port numbers. What are these? The source TCP port allows us to know which tab on the browser the user wants the information to appear on. The destination TCP port is 443 for HTTPS since we're working securely. The port will give you access to the web server. Oh man, what is it this time? I know you're compressed, but you're still kind of big. Jeez, miss one year at the gym and everyone's on my case. We'll just... Here, PDU was split into TCP segments. This will allow quicker travel and less data strain. Whoa! Each of you take a sequence number. This way, the web server knows which one of you to accept first. You need to be taken in the right order regardless of which of you gets there first. If PDU wasn't TCP data, data that relies on connections and reliability, he would be known as a UDP or User Datagram Protocol. UDP datagram segments don't need sequence numbers since they care more about getting to the web server quick instead of worrying about getting all the data in order. Sometimes UDP segments don't even make it to the web server which is why things like live video or phone conversations can sometimes drop or lag. I need you guys to head on over to the network layer. Here PDU is given a source IP address. This is different from the destination IP he received from the presentation clerk. This source IP will let the router stations know that he came from our PC. From here, PDU is sent to the data link layer. Before we can send you out of the PC and to the switch, we need to give you this source MAC address. MAC address? The Media Access Control address. It lets the switch know that you came from this PC. But, I already have a source IP address for that. No, you need the IP for the router and the MAC address for the switch. The MAC address is unique to each device so that the switch will know what PC it came from. Oh. And since the destination IP you're trying to get to isn't in our network, I'll have to give you this destination MAC address of the router, our default gateway. But why can't I just use an IP to get to the router? Because the switch only reads MAC addresses since it's a layer 2 switch. Give that destination MAC address to the switch so he can send you to the router. The router will know where to send you next based on your destination IP. Oh, okay. Stand here so he can send you as pulses of electricity to the switch since the PC is connected to the switch using an ethernet cable. What port did you come from? Um, port 5. When data is sent from an end device to a switch, the switch keeps track of the data's MAC address and which port it entered from in a MAC address table. This makes the switch have an easier time sending data to the right ports. If the switch didn't know which port had a specific MAC address, it would send a broadcast signal to all the ports to find which one would respond with the MAC address it needed to find. Okay, and where are you going? Okay, that's the router. Go to port 48. Okay. Well, I hope I don't have to do that much more. Hmm, I wonder where my segments are. Where are you headed? In our network or externally? This is an external IP address. I don't know where this is. I'll have to send you to my default gateway. Okay, sure. I'll need your source IP. Let me take a look at it so I can write it down into my table. I have to keep track of everyone that leaves our internal network for an external one.
The router clerk is writing down the port PDU came from as well as PDU's source IP in his port address translation table. Okay, take this public IP address as your new source IP. We use this IP to communicate to the outside world. Also, take my MAC address as your new source MAC address. But how will the data I send back know where to go? Because I'm going to tack on this port number to your new public source IP address. So when they come here looking for you, I'll look up that port number in my table and find your source IP and send them back to your PC. Okay. Also, here, take this new destination MAC address. You'll be able to head to my default gateway, the cable modem, with it. PDU now has a new source IP address with a port tacked on, a new source MAC address, that of the router, and a new destination MAC address, that of the modem. But, because he still has the same destination IP address, the modem will know where to send him next. Now get to the transfer station so we can send you as pulses of electricity to the modem. Aw oh, jeez, how many more times will I have to turn into pulses? Makes me a bit dizzy. And scared. And I think I may have leaked myself a bit back there. Your data, you better not be leaking. And be prepared because you'll have to hop around a bunch to get there. Ugh, man, alright. I mean, okay. PDU is then sent to the modem, which makes him hop along other routers before finally landing at the router of the web server's network. From here, PDU will work his way back up the OSI layers in the web server's network until he finally reaches the application layer of the web server itself. At the web server, he will ask the web server to send data back to our PC with the data needed to load the web page. Because of this segment ID, session ID, and symmetric key PDU gave the web server, the web server then knew which segment of the data he was, who was logged into the website, and how to decrypt the data. From here, the web server sends its own PDU from its network back to our network so our PC can load the web page. If you learned something from this video, give it a thumbs up. If there's a topic you want us to break down next, leave it in the comments below. Or if something clicked for you that didn't before, let me know as well by typing it below. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when the next video comes out.